Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Museum Munchkins. I'm Mr. Nick, and today we are learning all about pangolins. And we're going to start off by singing a pangolin song, if you want to stand up on your feet. All right, so this song is called I'm a Little Pangolin. <clears throat> And it goes like this. We can dance around and roll ourselves up into a ball. And we can go to sleep and spring wide awake when we hear things happening in the song. But we can also just do a little pangolin dance however we feel like doing it today. Are you ready? All right, so here we go. I'm a little pangolin during the day. I'm sleeping in my burrow while it's hot and sunny out. And while this moon is in the sky, I go searching far and wide for lots of little ants and bugs to eat. I'm a pangolin, I'm a pangolin. I look just like a pine cone with a tail. I'm a pangolin, I'm a pangolin, an armored anteater covered with scales. Let's do it one more time, are you ready? Oh, I'm a little pangolin during the day, I'm sleeping in my burrow while it's hot and sunny out. And while the moon is in the sky, I go searching far and wide for lots of little ants and bugs to eat. I'm a pangolin, I'm a pangolin. I look just like a pine cone with a tail. I'm a pangolin, I'm a pangolin. An armored anteater covered with scales. Very good, that was some awesome pangolin dancing. I'm gonna set my guitar down so we can learn all about these awesome animals. All right, have you ever seen a pangolin before? Maybe you've seen one in a story or on TV, or maybe you've even been lucky enough to see one at a zoo. Or maybe you've even been lucky enough to see one out in the wild. Well, pangolins are really interesting animals that are found on the other side of the planet here in Asia and in Africa. Now, there are eight different types of pangolin that we find on our planet. And the first thing that we normally, normally notice about pangolins is that their bodies are covered in scales. So they have scales kind of a little bit like a fish or they look a little bit like a reptile or like they have weird armor all over the outside of their body. I think they look a little bit like a walking pine cone. What do you think? Because their plates kind of look like the, the little parts of a pine cone. Now these scales on their body are made out of something called keratin. Can you say that word with me? Keratin. Yeah, so keratin is the same sort of stuff that our fingernails and our hair is made of. So if you want to feel what a, a pangolin feels like, we can feel our fingernails and that's sort of what they feel like, kind of smooth but hard at the same time. Really interesting. Now, pangolins use all those scales for protection on the outside of their body to protect themselves from predators. And when an animal comes around that might want to eat them, they can actually curl themselves up into a ball and protect themselves with just that armor on the outside of their body. So those, teeth, those hard scales are too hard for teeth and claws from other predators to get through. So that's really good, nice protection for them. So it's almost like they're walking around with a suit of armor on their body all the time. And if their armor doesn't help scare their predators away, they have another defense mechanism, kind of like a skunk. They can make themselves really, really smelly too. So they have some good defenses. They also have on their front hands, they have long claws. So they have these long claws on their front hands that they use for climbing and for digging. So they love to eat termites 
and, and ants. And so they'll use their long claws to dig into a termite nest or into the ground where the ants are living so that they can eat them with their long, sticky tongue. So they have a long, long, long tongue that can be up to 16 inches long, and their spit is very, very sticky. So when they stick their tongue out, all the little ants and termites and things that are around will stick right to their tongue if they touch it, and then they can slurp them back up. Now, pangolins don't have any teeth in their mouths, so they just swallow all those ants and termites whole and let their, body, their, let their stomachs do the digesting. Sometimes they also eat little rocks that bounce around in their stomach too to help grind up those ants and termites that they eat um, So since they don't have the teeth to chew them up. And some pangolins, like I said, live in trees, so they use their claws for climbing. So they also can use the, they find ants and termites and things up in trees too, so they can use their claws to rip open the bark and get at bugs that are living under the surface of the tree, but also they can use them to just climb up into the trees. And one of the coolest things I think about pangolins is that they're very protective of these nice sharp claws on the front of their bodies. So they uh, walk with their hands held up so that they don't damage their claws by walking around on the ground and bumping them on rocks and sticks and things in their environment. So I think that they always look a little bit like they're waiting uh, very patiently to ask someone for permission to do something um, since they are always walking with their hands just up and sort of tucked underneath their bodies like that. I really like penguins. They're one of my favorite animals. And they also use their long claws for digging out burrows for them to sleep in. So the burrows of a pangolin can be up to 12 feet underground. So they dig long burrows for themselves to go inside and hide in throughout the day while they're sleeping, while it's really hot outside. And then at night, they come out of their burrows and they go looking for ants and termites to slurp up with that long, sticky tongue. Now, unfortunately, pangolins aren't doing very well in the wild right now. So every single type of pangolin on our planet today is endangered or threatened, which means they're not doing very well, and there aren't very many of them left in the wild. But there's, that's, that's not to say that, they're, that all hope is lost for the pangolin, and we can actually do a lot of help to help protect pangolins. And one of the things that we can do, and one of the best things that you can do at home about pang to help the pangolins is to share your in knowledge about pangolins uh, with other people. So everything that you learn today about pangolins, you can go and share with a friend. And right now is actually a great time to share uh, information about pangolins because this coming Saturday, February 20th, is World Pangolin Day. Um, so there's all sorts of fun things that we can do to help protect the pangolins and teach people about pangolins. And there's simple things that we can do at home to just celebrate pangolins and want to learn more about them. So things we could do at home on Pangolin Day, we could, for a snack, since pangolins like to eat ants, we could make ants on a log. We could put some raisins and peanut butter on some celery and have some ants on a log for a snack. We could make a pangolin burrow in our house out of blankets and pillows. That might be kind of fun, like a pillow fort, but for pangolins. You could draw a picture of a pangolin and maybe write a story about it, about an adventure that it goes on. And we've even got a special pangolin craft that we're going to show you how to make that you could make to learn and teach people more about pangolins and their scaly protective armor. Any of the things that you do, though, we would love to see, and you can share those with us um, the, on, our, on social media, and you can use the hashtag World Pangolin Day so that you can share them with people around the world and with everybody who's interested in learning about pangolins this week on World Pangolin Day. And another thing you could even do is read a story about pangolins, and I think we should go do that right now. All right, today's story is A Wish for Pangolin, written by Carrie Hassler and illustrated by Christina Wald. Okay. 
Deep in the jungle of Thailand, just before night turned to day, Priya the pangolin spotted something, a mound of dirt rising from the ground. Look, Shatri, termites, she pointed out to her pup. With her sharp claws, Priya and Priya dug through the termite mound to reveal a feast. Shatri moved himself down toward her nose. The two pangolins slurped up termites after termite with their long, sticky tongues. As the pangolins ate, Priya looked down. She saw footprints, human footprints. Shartri, it's not safe here. Hurry, Priya called anxiously. Shartri clawed up his mother's tail and clung onto her back. The pangolins quickly scurried to their <coughs> fig tree home. Its enormous roots spread across the jungle floor like tentacles. Priya began expertly climbing with Shatri riding piggyback. High up in the tree, where a branch met the trunk, the pangolins slipped into the safety of a hollow just as the dawn was breaking. Mama, why did we have to hurry home? Shatri asked. Those footprints belong to hunters, Priya replied. We need to hide. Plus, it's time for us to sleep. But why do we sleep during the day? We pangolins are nocturnal, Priya answered. We're supposed to sleep during the day and find our food at night. But we have to be extra careful in the dark. So the hunters don't catch us, Shatri asked. That's right, so the hunters don't catch us. Priya looked at Shatri. See our scales, she pointed at them, at the hard brown scales that covered both their bodies. They protect us, like a shield, Shatri asked. That's right, like a shield, Priya answered. But they don't protect us from everything. They won't protect us from the hunters. We'll have to find a new home and one that's safe and far away from them. Shatri looked worried. Mama, I'm scared. Priya curled her tail around her pup. Shatri, did you know that your name means brave knight? Your scales are like a coat of armor, just like what a brave knight wears. You will have to be brave, Priya continued. I know you can do it. Shatri looked at, down at his scales. Our scales make us look like an artichoke, Shatri realized. Or a pine cone, his mother smiled back. Or even a pineapple, he replied. Priya and Shatri giggled. Comforted, Shatri curled up with his mother and fell asleep. Just as the bright light of the afternoon sun began to soften into dusk, the pangolins woke up. It was time to begin their search for a new home. With Shatri on her back, Priya cautiously made her way along the forest floor, always on the lookout for more footprints. She used her strong sense of smell to detect human scent. Hold on tight, Shatri, she instructed, and be very quiet. Deeper into the forest they went. Priya saw fewer and fewer footprints. This must be the right direction, she thought. When they approached a clearing, Priya paused. Look, Mama, Shatri whispered. Together they looked up at the full moon, which hung in the sky like a pearl. It's beautiful, she replied, but a full moon would also make it easier for hunters to see them. We must stay in the shadows, Shatri. Through a thicket, they could see a small herd of elephants <coughs> huddled together. What are they doing? Shatri asked. It looks like they are getting ready for the lantern festival, Priya answered. The elephants will light the lanterns and then release them into the night sky. But why? Shatri asked. It's a time for letting go of worries when the lanterns drift away. It's like the worries are drift up are drifting away with them, Priya explained. And then we get to make a wish. Shatri smiled. He liked making wishes. Suddenly, the pangolins heard a rustling in the leaves and brush. Something was approaching. Hunters, in one <clears throat> swift move, Priya turned over and hugged Shatri and rolled into a tight ball around him. Priya could feel her heart pounding. 
she tightened her coil around Shatri, and Shatri made a wish that his coat of armor would indeed make him a brave knight. The pangolins silently waited, hoping the brush would, would hide them. From a distance, Priya and Shatri heard a loud trumpeting. There was a thunderous crash as an elephant charged through the brush and trees. Priya could hear running. The elephant had scared the danger away. Before they knew it, Priya and Shatri were swept up and carefully placed high on the safety of the elephant's back. Unrolling herself, Priya nodded at the elephant. Thank you, my friend. You are very welcome, the elephant said with a smile. I will take you to a new home high on the hill where the hunters cannot find you. With her size and strength, the elephant easily carried the pangolin pair up the hillside. When they reached the bank of the swiftly flowing river, they stopped. The other side is very steep. Too steep for hunters, the elephant explained. The gibbon will take you to the tallest tree. There is a hollow at the top where you will be safe. On the other side of the river, a gibbon waited. The elephant strode across the river and placed the pangolins on a branch of an impossibly tall tree. Together with a gibbon, they climbed up to the hollow. Filled with gratitude, Priya thanked both the gibbon and the elephant who disappeared back into the lush forest. Safe at last, Priya and Shatri sat high on a branch where they could see across the forest. Mama, I see the lanterns, Shatri announced, like glowing jellyfish carried by the ocean currents. The elephant's lanterns emerged from the clearing and floated above them in a beautiful sea of light. As the lanterns drifted into the sky, the pangolins could feel their hearts lighten, their worries carried away. Priya and Shatri snuggled together under the sky's magical glow. Let's make a wish, Mama, said Shatri with a smile. And together they did. The end. All right, so today we're going to be making sort of a roly-poly pangolin craft. And for this activity, we're just going to need a few things. We're going to need a paper plate, a straw, a brass brad, some scissors, a glue stick, some colored pencils or something to color with. I like using colored pencils. And we're going to need our pangolin worksheet that we've got on our website. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color my pangolin here and then cut it out. So I'm going to use sort of a light brownish color, I think, to color a lot of my pangolin. So pangolins are usually a brownish color. Some of them are lighter than other ones, and sometimes they can be really dark. The scales on their body can be a really dark brown. I'm going to make mine kind of a lighter colored brown, I think. And I'm just going to really quickly go over its whole body with my colored pencil here. Just like that. And I think I'm going to go a little bit lighter on his face to help that stand out a little bit more. There we go. And now I'm going to take a darker colored pencil. And he's got, my picture's got his belly and his arm there. And I'm going to color those in with a darker brown so it looks like they're farther away or they're a little bit in shadow. There we go. And I might actually ooh, give a, a little bit of shading to these little scales on his body too. That might look pretty nice. Let's see what that looks like if I color that in like that with just a little bit of this dark brown, maybe give, make it a little more interesting looking. You could color your pangolin however you want, like that, I'm just, but I'm just gonna color mine, I think, with a little bit of light brown and a little bit of dark brown. Oh, he's got a lot of these scales on his body. So, and this isn't even as many as a real pangolin would have. They have tons of scales over their whole bodies to help protect them 
from predators. All right, there we go. Some more colors on there, perfect. And now I've got my pangolin all colored and now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm going to cut around the outside of my pangolin here. So I don't have to go and cut out all those little bumpies all around the outside of its body. I could if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna cut a nice circle all the way around the outside of my pangolin here. Perfect. So now I've got this little roly-poly pangolin and I'm gonna take my paper plate and my glue stick and my pangolin picture that I just paint col uh, colored and I'm gonna put some glue on the back of that pangolin. I'm just gonna rub a little bit of this glue stick all over the back of my pangolin here and I'm gonna stick it to my paper plate here, right in the middle. There we go. Now pangolins don't really roll around um, when they're rolled up into balls to protect themselves, but we're pretending a little bit. Maybe this is a pangolin that does like to roll around. So I've got it roll stuck on my paper plate here now, and now I'm going to poke a hole right in the middle of my paper plate, which looks like it's gonna be right about there. So really carefully, you can have a grown-up help you with this part. I'm gonna poke a little hole that's just big enough for my brass brad to go, go through. Just like that. And then I'm gonna take my straw too. You're gonna to need a parent's help with this part too, an adult's help with this part too. And I'm going to bend just the tip of my straw there and take my scissors and I'm going to cut, make a little cut in my straw too, not all the way through both sides, just so I make a little hole in my straw. So that's where my brass brad's gonna go through my straw after it goes through my plate. And now I'm going to take my brass brad and put it through the middle there. And then I'm going to put it through that hole I just cut in my straw. And so now I'll bend it over like that. So it's bent over like that so it holds it in place. And now my pangolin will roll. And actually I could even put it on my table here and have this pangolin roll around like that. So I've, we made this really fun roly poly pangolin craft. And I hope that you have fun making one for yourself too. If you do end up making a pangolin craft today, or this coming Saturday, if you want to, you could pl please share with us on our social media um, and use the hashtag World Pangolin Day so we can make sure that we share our fun pang pangolin craft with friends all over the world to help celebrate these awesome animals. I hope you had fun today learning about pangolins and I hope that we see you next week for another episode of Museum Munchkins. <laughs>